Let's all rise for the doxology. Begin. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Let's remain standing for our scripture reading. It will be in Philippians 2, verse 14 to 18. May we open our Bibles to Philippians 2, verse 14 through 18. Philippians 2, verse 14 through 18. Philippians 2, verse 14 through 18. Do everything without complaining or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God, without fault in a crooked and depraved generation in which you shine like stars, in the universe, as you hold out the word of life, in order that I may boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor for nothing. But even if I am being poured out like a drink offering on the sacrifice and the service coming from your faith, I am glad and rejoice with all of you. So you too should be glad and rejoice with me. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. You may be seated. may notice we are still in the book of Philippians. And it's a study, it's a book study. We're going through it uh, section by section. And if you have your bulletins with you, the outline of the sermon today is found at the back of your bulletin. If you listen to the reading of the scripture, you will notice that the topic today is about grumbling. <coughs> Look at the thesaurus of other, other words that are related to grumbling, and I found these words. Grumble, gripe, bellyache, whine, W-H-I-N-E, complain, carp, protest, moan, object, nitpick. All these words are used to describe a chronic human condition, a condition that only affects the one doing it, but also it affects many others around them. Have you ever been guilty of grumbling and complaining? Many of you are honest. But some are not. <laughs> There's a website that was basically all about complaining. And folks were asked this question. Why do people complain when they work? But when they don't have a job, they still complain. Because most of us are stuck in jobs we hate. 
We complain because we hate our jobs, and if not working, we complain because we need money. You know, if we're not careful, we can all find ourselves grumbling even at the tiniest thing. Complaining starts almost immediately when we're born and continues throughout our lives. That means complaining and grumbling becomes our nature. It's natural. Even before we can put into words, we put it into crying and screaming. Our complaint. And even as children, we complain about many things. Uh, I complain about vegetable. I hate vegetables. I want meat. I want, you know, cheeseburger. <laughs> Been dressing up. I don't want to dress up every Sunday. It, uh, it itches my neck when I dress up. I want to be comfortable. And even as adults, we complain because, for example, the line is too long. Or the sermon is too long. <laughs> or our food isn't exactly like we want it, and so on and so forth. You know, there are various ways of grumbling or complaining. Some folks voice their complaints. They are loud. They whine. They talk about it. Others mumble under their voice. Okay? They just whisper as if nobody hears. And still others, they grumble on the inside only. They boil inside and keep it to themselves. What is grumbling and complaining, really? Is grumbling all that bad, anyway? We may not think that it is, it is it's something bad. But you know what? In the scripture, the scripture plays them right up with the sins like murder, adultery, stealing, and others. In other words, grumbling is no small thing in the Bible. It is a sin that must be worked on and through God's power overcome. And so it is not by accident that the Apostle Paul, just as soon as he writes that we are to work out our salvation and he said to that God works in through us both to will and to do his good will remember the message last Sunday right away he talks about grumbling and complaining because this is an area that affects most people including most Christians you know the Bible is full of complainers did you know that? The first complainer was the first man, Adam. Adam complained to God. He told God that it was God's fault that Adam sinned. Turn your Bibles to Genesis chapter 3, verse 12. The man said, Adam said, The woman whom you gave to be with me she gave me the fruit, and I ate. <coughs> and God turned to the woman, and just like Adam, he, he got this from, she got this from Adam, the woman said, the serpent that you created, he gave me the fruit. God turned to the serpent. How did you ever create a tree like this? Why did you create a tree like that? In other words, there is the tendency since from the beginning that we tend to pass the blame either to God or to others. And so when sinners are confronted with their sin, 
They will turn to you in a second. Complaining is a selfish mindset that declares, I'm not getting what I want and what I deserve. Because this is done in the realm of God's sovereignty, what we are really trying to say when we complain is that, God, you're not being good to me. And we have learned this from the beginning, from, from the very first man. And so it becomes evident why Paul tells the early, early Christians, and he, even, he also tells us right now, that there is a sin such as called grumbling. Because it affects everything. Grumbling is a sin that permeates the very person we are and impacts our ability to bring glory to God. And when we complain, when we grumble, we are actually telling God that we're not at all happy with our circumstances and that He is to blame. So let me share with you, let us study this command of not grumbling. First, let's look at the extent of this command. The extent of this command is so easy, easily noticed when you read the verse, the verse, uh, the first verse, verse 14. Philippians 2:14. It says, "Do all things without grumbling or questioning." So the extent of this command includes all. It's not just some. Do all things without grumbling or questioning. This is the attitude all believers should have as they work out their salvation. In other words, if you want to grow in Christ, if you want to, to grow in Christ-likeness, you must do all things without complaining. So here is a biblical principle, an example that we find in the Bible. It's, in, it's found in Matthew chapter 20, verses 1 to 15. It's an example of workers who were complaining about their salary, their wages, but mostly complaining that they were being treated unfairly. If you turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 20, 1 to 15, I'm going to read through it. <coughs> it says, For the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who went out early in the morning to hire laborers in his vineyard. So he must be a rich person. So he hired some laborers to work for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for a denarius a day, that's the the amount they're going to receive for the, for the day's work, a denarius. He sent them into his vineyard. And going out about the third hour, that means three hours later, for example, they started six o'clock, and about nine o'clock in the morning, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And then he said, you go into the vineyard too, and whatever is right, I will give you. And so they went. Going out again about the sixth hour and the ninth hour, that means around 12 noon and around 3 o'clock in the afternoon, he did the same. And at about the eleventh hour, that is about 5 o'clock in the afternoon, he went out and found others standing. And he said to them, why do you stand here idle all day? And they said to him, because no one has hired us. And he said to them, you go into the vineyard too. And when the evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to the foreman, call all the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last to the first. And when those hired about the eleventh hour came, each of them received a denarius. 
Now, when those hired the first came, they, they thought they would receive more. But each of them also received a denarius. And on receiving it, they grumbled at the master of the house, saying, This last work only one hour, and you have made and, and you have made them equal to us, who have who have borne the burden of the day in the scorching heat. Actually saying, we work the whole day and we receive the same thing as these people who just work for one hour. But he replied to them, friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last worker as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with, the, with what belongs to me? Or do you begrudge my generosity? Some of us may think that that's 